so uh, what we are going to um, so this chapter is about linear momentum we'll uh, learn a quantity called linear momentum and um, we'll study collisions uh, it turns out that linear momentum is a quantity that is conserved in collisions what that means is uh, uh, when objects collide the linear momentum of the system before the collision is equal to the linear momentum of the system after the collision okay uh, so that's what we'll look at yeah mm. all right Okay, so uh, so here are the topics we'll uh, go over. Uh, we'll define linear momentum. We'll look at collisions and impulses. Uh, does anybody, well, uh, so I don't know if you've come across the term impulse, but um, oftentimes you encounter situations where uh, uh, large force will act for a very small time, a small amount of time. And uh, uh, in those situations, we define something called an impulse and I'll show you an example later. And like I said, uh, one of our main interests will be looking at phenomena where the um, linear momentum is conserved. So in collisions, uh, linear momentum before the collision is equal to linear momentum after the collision. And that's what we, and that's what this means, conservation of linear momentum. Um, and then uh, we'll uh, talk about inelastic and elastic collisions. Elastic collisions are collisions where kinetic energy is also conserved. And inelastic collisions are collisions where kinetic energy is not conserved. Okay. Um, so momentum is conserved in all collisions. Okay, so those are the topics we'll, uh, we'll uh, look at. Okay. Um, so let's get started. So um, linear momentum. Um, so it turns out that the. Um, so I'll I'll go ahead and read this, and uh, so in, we'll define some uh, a conserved quantity called linear momentum. Now, when we say conserved quantity, what we mean is as the system is evolving, as things change. So for instance, two things are colliding and stuff like that. So things are changing, velocities and all are changing, but it turns out that the linear momentum of the system will remain constant, okay? So that, that's one thing we do in physics. Uh, we'll look at systems where um, things will be changing and we'll see, are there any, we ask the question, are there any quantities that stay the same? And linear momentum is one of them, okay? So it's a very important quantity. Um, the momentum is just as powerful, important, and useful as energy. Okay. All right. Uh, let me pause a second. Uh, can you see the pointer and uh, hear the audio and all that clearly? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. All right. So, uh, so again, uh, linear momentum like I said, is a quantity that's convenient uh, in many situations to use the idea of linear momentum, and uh, we'll do that, okay? So uh, now, earlier I mentioned um, uh, that we will be interested in situations where a large force will uh, act for a very small, uh, for a very small amount of time, and, uh, and we'll define something called impulse. So here's a situation if you're playing a sport, if you're playing bat baseball, the force the bat exerts on the ball can the peak force can be as large as two to three thousand times the weight of the ball it can be that large but the the force will probably act for a, maybe maybe 50 milliseconds or something like that okay so here's a force that the bat exerts on the ball which will be fairly large uh, acting on a very uh, acting for a very small amount of time and so in these, these situations, it's not practical to measure the force uh, as a function of time. And we'll define something called impulse. Okay, so um, these might all just be a bunch of words, but you'll, you'll get a sense for it as we proceed, okay? All right, so 
here's how linear momentum is defined. So linear momentum is denoted by P. It is a vector and it's the mass of the object times its velocity. Okay, so it's a vector. What are the units? Mass is in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second. So it's the units are kilograms, meters per second. Okay, so that's how linear momentum is defined. Now, uh, um, we all saw that linear moment, uh, Newton's second law was force times, force equal to mass times acceleration. But it turns out that this is the most general form of the second law, Newton's second law. Uh, uh, so let's, um, let's uh, okay, so force, this was what you guys saw earlier, force was mass times acceleration. But uh, Newton really had defined force, and Newton's second law is really, force was rate of change of momentum, okay? Now this, so let's uh, do this d by dt of, momentum is mass times velocity, okay? And from your calculus classes, you've learned that this is, if you use the chain rule, dm by dt times velocity plus m times dv by dt, okay? Now, in most situations, the mass of the object does not change. And so this is zero. This term is zero. And so most often, F is zero plus the first term is zero and mass times the acceleration, dV by dt is acceleration. Okay, so do you guys understand that? Did you guys understand all of this? Okay, so from the necklace, can anybody think of a situation where the mass changes? Hmm. Can anybody think of a situation where the mass? Um, okay. Yeah, when you're losing fuel, and that happens in a rocket, okay. The weight of a rocket can change quite a bit. The mass of a rocket changes quite a bit. So for instance, uh, a rocket is mostly 90% fuel. So by the time the space shuttle gets to orbit, and that only takes about eight minutes, it's lost 90% of its mass. So in those situations, this term will not be zero and then Newton's law would not be F equal to MA, okay? So those are the situations we'll consider. So this is the most general form of Newton's second law. Force is um, time rate of change of momentum, okay? All right. Uh, okay, so uh, oh, I better get rid of this stuff. Where is an eraser? Rectangle spotlight. Hmm. I can't find an eraser. Wow. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to erase this stuff. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so in this slide, um, 
Okay, let me go to the whiteboard here a second. Okay, you saw that Newton's second law is F is dP by dt. And so this is really change in momentum divided by uh, change in time. Okay, uh, now uh, here you can see that what this equation tells you is, what this equation tells you is, if you want to change the momentum of an object by this amount, and if you try and change it fast, you have to apply a large force, okay? So if you want to change the momentum of an object, so if let's say there was a car going at 70 miles an hour and you want to stop it, and if you want to stop the car in a very short amount of time, let's say a millisecond, then you would have to apply a large force. So that's what this equation is telling you, okay? So we'll uh, uh, refer to that. Okay, so, uh, Okay. Okay. Um, so in this slide, in this slide, they what this gives you is uh, the momentum of some objects. So a 90 mile per hour fastball, the momentum is six. These are in SI units, kilograms, meters per second. So about 10. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 10 units there. A charging rhino, a charging rhino, the uh, momentum is three times 10 to the four. So roughly 10,000 times uh, greater momentum. So if you want to charge, uh, stop a fastball or a rhino in the same amount of time, stopping a rhino is, uh, is uh, 10,000 times harder. So you need a greater force, okay? So that's what that, that's telling you, okay? And anyway, so here are some momenta that uh, you can look at. All right, so uh, here's this, uh, here are the safety devices. Uh, you guys, uh, this is an airbag. And uh, we've talked about this in class. You saw, you know that if you experience a large acceleration, uh, large acceleration meaning 15 G to 20 G, that's bad for your health. Okay. And um, so um, 15 G, if you're experiencing an acceleration of 15 G, that means the force of 15 times your body weight is acting on you. That's what that means. Okay. So, Again, let's go to the whiteboard. So here's, oops, force is a, a delta P by delta T, okay, uh, dP by dT. And again, if, if delta T, if this thing, if something's momentum changes in a small time, so if you were going at 90 miles an hour and you got stopped by a steering wheel, the steering wheel stops you very fast and the force on you will be quite large. So the idea of the, sleep, uh, the airbag is to stop, stop you, you over a longer period of time. The longer this is, the smaller force is. And uh, so the acceleration, the smaller the force on you, the smaller the acceleration that you're experiencing. And that's the idea. Okay. Okay, so uh, here is the uh, here is the airbag. Uh, if if you if the airbag didn't deploy and you got stopped by the steering wheel, it would uh, you would. Um, uh, okay, what was the question? Let's see. Somebody had a question. So the smaller the force, the more amount of time. Yes, the m larger the time, smaller the force. Okay. Okay. So, so if the if the steering wheel stopped you by itself, it would stop you very fast, and you would experience a large force. With the airbag, uh, you get stopped over a larger amount of time, and uh, the forces you experience are smaller. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so let's go, so that's the idea. Okay, now, um, 
here what we'll do here what uh, we define is let's say you have a system of particles you have a bunch of particles the total momentum of the system is the momentum of this particle plus the momentum of this plus the momentum of that so the total momentum of the system is the sum of the momenta of all the individual particles and uh, it turns out that uh, this newton second law newton second law applies for a system as well the net force would be just so if this in here in this diagram this is the momenta and let's say um, uh, these are the forces you just add up all the forces the net force on the system is equal to rate of change of momenta of the system okay so that's that newton's second law applies to newton second law applies to a single particle and a system of particles as well so that's what that's saying okay. all right so let's uh, pause here a second i will uh, stop this recording so we have a, a finite file and then uh, i will uh, let you guys ask questions as well okay so I will, i'll go to the chat window and we'll do questions so let me stop this recording